probably the ref. Beat on my chest, might get a tag. What you expect? They know I'm a dog, I go at their neck. I go at their neck. The screen on a jack, I'm leaning them left. I'm mean with the left, but I'm snatching them right. About to take flight, yikes. 94 feet, you full blood press, don't impress. Move like a vet, I got them upset, yeah. Stress, three so wet. Make your head coach, switch up the defense and set. That's better than stretch. Stay your feel, get some rest. Falling since a little one from a pee wee, I've been in league. Been a walking bucket, high school highlights all on TV. From the Julie to a new league, you barely hooped in PE. Killer kind of skin it like a team at Oop the VC. Oh, they in beast mode. They in beast mode. Walking cheat code. Walking cheat code. This shit easy. This shit easy. Like a free throw. Like a free throw. They talk real hoop. They talk real hoop. 94 feet though. 94 feet though. They talk real hoop. They talk real hoop. 94 feet though. Welcome, hey everybody. Welcome to the 94 feet podcast. I'm your host, Cam Tatum. All right, it's Skinny the Pebble. And today, man, we got a great, 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 great show for you guys, man. We got a couple guests on here, man. They really don't need no introduction, but we're going to give it to you anyway. We got two Northside legends, man, hailing out of Bergmar, nice. man. We got the Spoon Brothers, Winton and Wesley Witherspoon, man. Y'all give it up for them. Appreciate y'all coming through, man. Appreciate y'all yeah, coming through, man. man. Y'all doing all right? Always, always. Hey, you want to ask them the first all question, right, first man? first question, we all ask when you come to the stage, man, who was the first person to give y'all work, man? You want to first? Hmm. Why you say, hmm? Huh? Yeah, I, um... I don't have, I, I think I think I'm obligated to say Chris Allen right here. Mm. Mm. That's the name there for sure. Man. I think That's I'm obligated name. because the the anybody that was around when I was at Burkmar, you couldn't get into them Burkmar Meadow Creek games because everybody for one wanted to see Chris, and then the wheels started turning for me at that same time. So the games between me and Chris Allen in high school was crazy, and you know. He got the best of me a bunch of those games. Is Chris Chris older than you? Yeah, by one year. He's oh, o, he's o, he's 07. I'm 08. Okay. Okay. But yeah, Cam was uh, uh Chris was tough. Chris was for sure tough. For sure, man. Shout out CA, man. You got to yeah. the show, bro. Well, I'm gonna have to say now I was actually gonna say Reese Rice from Boston College, man, because I really didn't remember nobody from high school that did much of anything against me. But I'm gonna give Archie Mia away his flowers from North College. I think he had a thirty piece, and I think I, I had caught a couple of those buckets. So Archie Mia away, man, I forgot about that man. Myself. Yeah, they call me no, but they call me no, man. They call me no, man. No, see, that's the point. Like yeah. y'all don't, y'all didn't nobody, nobody wants to respect the Hoopers that came from the North, man. Like it's well, a bunch of guys that really, you know, that went on to do some great things from Gwinnett County. Man. I, I, I don't know. I, I will take the other. Argument on that. I think that, especially guys coming from the east side, I think that we looked at it from you guys' standpoint that you guys got all, you know what I'm saying, the the opportunities, the limelight, yeah. because you had the nicer schools. The facilities. So the facilities. Oh, I, each one of y'all schools have a football field. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Even the worst school. I mean, if I heard no disrespect, but I heard Meadow Creek was probably the worst school I, out of all the ones. Are you saying school. they football wise? Football no, no, no. I'm talking about school wise. I'm talking about like people. I'm talking about like just in the school. We would call it, we would call it Ghetto Creek. That's what we were talking about. We call it Meadow Creek Ghetto Creek. Shiloh, Shiloh, Shiloh is now because Shiloh, they basically reclassed their whole school to Stone Mountain. I mean, that's the DeKalb County. Shiloh is like a Gwinnett DeKalb County school. But when we was in school. Okay. No, no, no. Oh, Back to Auburn High School, it was definitely Metal Creek. It was Metal Creek when we was in school. Yeah, Metal Creek Shiloh was, was half white. Yeah, this year. It's the Snailville, Shiloh, Shiloh, is. Shiloh and Sa- I learned this when I became, when I when I transferred from being a basketball player to an educator. South Gwinnett and Shiloh High School are the only two schools in the state of Georgia that take transfer students. Meaning, if you're on Rule 12 at Tucker, before they send you to the alternative school, you can transfer and go to Shiloh, South Carolina, you know and it's like the slate is clean. There was a few, there's a few kids that actually went to Tucker that uh, transferred to South from to went to South Carolina. Yeah, so South listen, Gwinnett, man, no South Carolina and Shiloh High School are literally Eastside High with, mm-hmm. with Joe Clark and them. It's two two schools where is everybody is on that same type of timing. And if you grow up in that cluster, you kind of just get caught in thinking that it's regular, and it's mm-hmm. not regular over there. It's, but it's, it's different. Yeah, so, from from so, living over there, and that, I, I agree with you. But when we was coming up, mm, Meadow Creek. Man, what? Well, Meadow Creek. You got to think Meadow Creek and Tucker on the line. Mm. So, like, if you're on the Gwinnett side of Tucker, you go to Meadow Creek or you might slide into Parkview. Mm. We look at Meadow Creek and, like, but when you go see the facility, especially when you're coming from the old Tucker, like, bro, like you I played said, at the old Tucker. Yeah, yeah, it was tough. They, right. got, a, they got football facilities. Man, it was definitely saying, So, it was like, 
we looked at it yeah. with y'all. It's like y'all already had, you know, people weren't scared to come to y'all gym. Yeah. They, they didn't want to come to our gyms. Just, not necessarily because something was going to happen to them, but just because it was, well, I'd rather go to a nicer gym and go watch these players. I can get Chick Fil A or something like that at the at the at the concession stand with us. But most of them get is some not nachos, nachos and some, and some the, the thick ass, you know what I'm saying? The thick, the, the, the thick hot dogs. Yeah, like, y'all got hyper white lights and stuff. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? We got the orange bulbs and stuff. This shit take 15 man. minutes. You had to cut it off for real. You had to cut the light on and literally wait and be like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then it just then it just go then it just come on. What y'all had? If y'all ran out of something, y'all had. I can go I to the store and then go back man. and get candy, man. They ran out. I'm sorry, so we out for the rest. We you don't have that. For, what do you mean? You had a whole backlog of girls. That's that poor right, preparation. Cam, I'm not jacking the fact y'all that's just trying to That's poor preparation. That's not like a third world country. We're not doing that. We're not doing that, bro. But I did say that. But I did say that. It wasn't like that. But it was. It was a big difference. But y'all, school system, like, you got to think, like, we coming up. DeKalb County is, like, one of the top school systems at one point. Yeah, I'm not arguing that. But what Cam just had, he just tried. Tried to describe it <laughs> was like there was a third it's, world it's country, bro. We not talking about it. We come up in Gwinnett County playing Buford and stuff. We just looking at y'all facilities. Y'all got three and four uniforms. Y'all ain't like paying no basketball. Said, y'all wasn't fucking brigade. Shit, y'all yeah. trying to act like we just privileged or something. Man, man, that's man. how we looked at it. Though. We was but out there on on the corner with buckets and shit, getting chains and we shit. Did too. We, we was, was up there with Bernie Crib and selling Crib and Crib. Yeah, well, we, what y'all coach did with y'all money ain't our business. <laughs> we wasn't. We wasn't doing fucking bad. Our coach bought our jerseys. We wasn't doing fucking bad. We was the original water boys before these Atlanta kids. We was that good. Hey, we selling Crib and Crib donut. One donut for two dollars, man. Oh, no, we no, got no. we got a nice jersey yeah, food, we had with the players and the Krispy Kreme, bro. Them shit's hard as hell, but we throwing them at each other, man. Hey, bro, we got washes, man. Come on, man. We got a nice jersey because we had good players before Wayne came. Oh, you they saying was they wearing the shit. same jerseys? You saying they were? And then when Wayne came, we started getting new jerseys every year because we had Nike behind us. We didn't have Nike. We had protein. But they, ah! Hey. We had protein, man. And we had a and we still and we did. Exactly. And we still had a state championship battle. Battle of the that. Hey, we had so that protein. Don't mean, that can't, that can't, y'all that don't got mean nothing. Huh? You said y'all had one? At the time we did have my, one. My, my coach got y'all that championship. Huh? He did that first one, 95. Carter? No, yeah. no. No, boy. Boy. Boy got y'all that championship. Boy in 95. With, with and Cheeks. Mm-hmm. And Carter Woods took us back yeah. in 99. The Barry's come talk to us. When we did our global. But see that I mean, but I think that was and that's one of the things that me and Cam talk about, right? I knew LeBerry, you know what I'm saying? I don't have a relationship with him. I don't have a relationship with Cheeks, you know what I'm saying? Mo, who the principal at Tucker now was on that team as well. Yeah. Eric, uh, Eric Parker, Dr. Parker. But none of our OGs ever came back. But now it makes sense now because our OGs was over there with y'all. Yeah. Right, because they, 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 they played coach, under Boyd. Yeah. It's kind of like really. what's going on at Burt Barnett, which I ain't going to get into, but. Oh, we're going to get into that. Yeah, we're going to get into that later. later. We'll get into it just a little bit later, but uh, right now, man, like I said, but you guys' name, man, uh, what a lot of people may not know, I, I didn't really realize it until I really uh, got to know more about you, um, that this was your older brother, um, so, and even before that, I, I knew about him, he's older than me, he came out, what year class he came out? Oh four. 4 so you came out a few years before me, and I knew about you, I heard about you, I seen you playing with the stars and stuff like that, but I didn't even know that you guys had an older brother that really kind of paved the way for you guys. Can you talk a little bit about him? I wish we could have him on here. Uh, shout out to Will. Um, uh, Will graduated 2000, and I think he still holds the record for most triple doubles. Mm. Okay. In Georgia history or in, in I don't know about Georgia history, but I know about Gwinnett County, County sure. history for sure. And I think he's the all-time assist leader. Yeah, now. And we're talking about 2000. 20, 20, years, 20 later. years later. We done we done seen some great players come through the system and mm-hmm. come through Gwinnett County, and none of them doing what he did then. And mind you, he got a runner-up state champion and he got a, a ring. And he did that at Bergmar as at well. Bergmar. Mm-hmm. So he really really set the tone for you. So going into you, going, going where, where did you where did you come from out of uh, following your brother's footsteps? I mean, I think that's just how it is having three brothers. Um, mm-hmm. We just competitive, like everything is competitive. So he was really good, but I wanted to be right. better. So I was in seventh grade trying to be better than my brother. I didn't care about the seventh graders. They was trash. Mm-hmm. I wanted to be better than my brother. He's four years older than me. 
So I'm in eighth grade with the same mentality. So by the time I get to ninth grade, he gone, doing his thing. And now I got another big brother in Wayne. So now I'm trying to be better than Wayne. So it really just the competitiveness in me just Wayne kind of, Arnold. Wayne Arnold. And kind of just carried on. I just continue to try to be better than better than somebody who's better than me. Now what big brother sign? Where he signed to? He actually Wayne went to the Air Force Academy out of high school. Okay. Which was a prep school, not not the school, and then he ended up going to uh, life after he did his year at the prep school. And you head coaching now in uh, Walton County, Walton, right? Yeah, yeah. Walton Grove, doing big things. Yeah. So now, <clears throat> so now you know as you as he goes off in the Air Force and he starts to do his thing, and you now coming into your own. You're now in high school, and uh, you're now the man. So now I see you average twenty four and seven seven rebounds and three assists. So now you're the man. So now can you talk about how you, how you recruited and heated up and, and what part did your brother play in, in helping you in that in that factor? First off, whoever, whoever was the statistician who said I had 24 <laughs> was lying, fam. I, I don't know who did that. Definitely that was a 30 ball. Okay, so that's on me. record. So they showed so, me. They, showed yeah, they definitely showed me. Yeah. They probably had Chad with 15 or something. No, no, no knock you, Chad. You my guy. So... <laughs> You said, how did that play into my recruitment? Well, so that's his whole train of thought right there. You heard 24. Hey, so you said, hold on, that nigga said, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. 24. So, 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 <laughs> let's, so let's get the right. So it was 30. No, nah, I have 26 and a half, bro. Okay. It wasn't 24. It wasn't 24. It was definitely wasn't 24. I need, I need, I need that 27. And I got a newspaper article in my I phone. I actually thought you were second behind Lou. No, I was third behind Lou and Billy. Billy. Mm-hmm. I was third behind Lou and Billy. <clears throat> definitely 27. Yeah, but, definitely 27. And then when you round that, you get to 30. That's how I got to 30. That's right. But uh, how I play my recruitment, funny thing is about my recruitment, right, I had a lot of mid-majors and a couple of high-major schools recruit me at first. So how I ended up with Virginia Tech is actually a story. So Georgia, Virginia Tech was like the major schools recruit me. I had a bunch of mid-majors like UT Chattanooga, uh UNC, uh, Charlotte, schools like that that recruited me, uh, George Washington, you know, whatever. So <clears throat> I actually got to be a senior exemption because I was unsigned. Mm-hmm. I went to Kingwood with the 17 and under from class 05. Kingwood Classic uh, AAU tournament in Houston. With yeah, Team I'm Georgia. Fine. And I actually got my buzz playing against the Georgia Stars and Lou and them. Well, I originally wanted to go to Georgia, but Felton – had just got there. Herrick had just was on his way out, and they would change a whole bunch of stuff. Yeah, they would change a whole bunch of stuff, and me and Felton just never got on the same page. And then Hewitt, Hewitt was on a mountaintop at Tech. Yeah, and he—that's how he talked to you. He talked to you like he was like I mean, yeah, he's better. He just, he just coming off the the national championship run. He, yeah. yeah. So when Hewitt called my phone to offer me, he said. Well, the White's going to declare for the NBA, and Randolph is going to Kentucky, so we got a scholarship for you, so you should come to Georgia Tech. That's how he offered me. Yo. And so, me, I'm on my two, so I'm like, I'm good. Oh, <laughs> I never yo. put him in my top five. I'm good. Like, that's how you call yeah. my phone. So, that's how, so that's, how tech that's how Tech got called. That is up. insane. <laughs> they got real called quick, up before real they quick, call, real they call quick, on. Real quick. Same thing happened with. Uh, the guy in Georgia. Who's the coach you just said in Georgia? Uh, Felton. Felton. He came to me, and Mercer and Billy was already there. And we're, I came actually on Lewis Williams draft night. And he was like, well, it looks like Lewis is about to go to the league, man. So, I mean, shit, Lou going to the league, scholarship, you know what I'm saying? We got, you know, scholarship is here for you. And respectfully, I know Lewis, who he was and stuff like that, but how you felt, was mm-hmm. like how I felt. I'm like, bro, I'm my own player too. I'm my own dog too. Respect me. So I, 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 I get that. I get that. So that falls through with Georgia Tech. You take the disrespect from it. You like, bro, nah, it's, 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 it's you ain't finna try me like that. And I'm your hometown kid. Like, come on, what's up? With, what we doing here? And then the rest of the schools that came on, they came on late, and I kind of was, I kind of was on some, like some loyalty type stuff when I went to Virginia Tech. It was like. They've been recruiting me the whole time, done below the whole time. Mm-hmm. I'm really loyal to this team that was loyal to me, which to my listeners or to his listeners, terrible idea. Go yeah. with the best, the, the best option you. for you, what fits you. Ain't no loyalty in this. Say it one more time, son. <laughs> Go Say with the best time, option bro. that fits you. There is no loyalty in this. 
like I said, man, on the show, we're going to be dropping gems, man. And, like, I hope some of you young fellas take heed to some of the things that we're saying. And we, you like, know, explosion. It's, yeah. It's, Boom. It's real life. It's real life <laughs> stuff that happened. And, you know, these yeah. guys are going through it. And you're going to go through it, too. So, hopefully, that you guys can learn something. Yeah. So, you go to Virginia Tech, and it's not the best situation. <clears throat> and uh, what well, team can you, you know, talk about why it wasn't the best situation? Mm. Oh, yeah, cool. So, I get to Virginia Tech. He shows me a roster. And I was loving the roster, right? Who's on that I, roster? Virginia. Jamon Gordon, Xavier Thaddell, Coleman Collins. Bunch of oh, great players, God. right? But my position was wide open. I was battling with another freshman who I felt at the time. R.P. Big was, Al, man. Oh, yeah, uh, definitely R.P. Big Al. But I was, felt like I was battling with a player that was completely different to me. He was more like a 4-3 tweener, and I was more like a natural 3-2 even at the mm-hmm. time. So they showed me this roster, and the roster's perfect. They failed to mention the Big East Player of the Year that sat out the year before because of a tour ACL. They didn't say nothing about Carlos Powell, and he Dixon. was clearly our, Carlos Dixon. My bad, Carlos Dixon. He was clearly our best player. So I go into a situation playing behind a former Big East Player of the Year and our first year in the ACC. Right? They they completely failed to mention it, and I didn't do no research. I was going off of what they were saying. Yeah. So if it wasn't for Carlos, then. He wasn't on the roster that they showed me, so you know that that's the main. That was one of the main reasons I went there because I seen an opening for me. Which is where you were gonna play and be able to just step in and right. on a major school, ACC, but then you didn't have all the facts to make it. If you were seen that, you would have probably made a different decision I, at that time. I possibly would have made a different decision. I was still on some loyalty nonsense because that's who I am to the core. I wasn't aware that that's not how I'm supposed to be when it comes to business decisions. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, that happens in my sophomore year. I get injured, come back, have a great comeback. You know what I'm saying? It was Florida State, North Carolina, Duke. I mean, I, the, what I came back to was crazy, but then I came back and I kind of blasted off and I had a really good comeback. And then that's when me and the coaching staff kind of had a difference in opinions. Mm-hmm. And... That w- that's what led to my transfer. To I like the way you said that. Man. Difference in opinion. That was well said. Difference, in, difference, difference opinion. in opinions was well said. Man, he's a professional, man. That's yeah, because I'd have said something different. I mean, they really. You can get your first. So, your man, they be adjusting the line up. He, I was getting a little attention from the next level. And I guess that didn't fit in his long term plan. And when I came back, when I said I blasted the scene, I really did. Dick Vitale gave me a nickname, shout out to Dick Vitale. But PT Peer, baby. Yeah, he gave me a nickname. Rubber Bear, man. He really called, he gave me a nickname. Like I, I really got some attention from the next level. Not saying that that was the path I was on, but if I continued doing what I was doing, that yeah, might have been an yourself. option, right? And so after that, I really got, I don't want to say uh effed over, for lack of a better term, for like versus Maryland. We had a lot of next level scouts there and <clears throat> I started the game, but I didn't play much. He took me out like at the beginning. I didn't play much. And then the next four or five games, I didn't play much either. And by the time we got to the ACC tournament, I played four seconds in our only game in the ACC tournament. What is four seconds? He put me in with four seconds in the end of the first half. What, what, what's he supposed to so it gives you a game. Do it say one minute or is it? No, it's four, zero, zero, four. That's what it says because they did they did the, the minutes and seconds well, at I that time. I played like thirty seconds one time, and that bitch came up in one minute. Yeah, I, I was mad because I'm like, nah, bitch, I'm not playing. Yeah, I played thirty seconds. I played four seconds. The last four seconds of the first half, and what it does is it brings the stats down. He does stuff like that. Because you so, get a game play. So you get a game play. So when so my stats would have. So your average is getting killed. So yeah. He so had, he he's had, bringing he my had, average out by playing me against Florida minutes. and Carolina. He really was going crazy. Like I was, That was one of them times. Like I'm like, my brother's on ESPN. And he's killing right now. Like, And it's the Carolina team where, you know, Sean May and yeah, all that. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Real, so, you know, yeah. So, you nah, know. That was Tyler Hansborough's team. Though. That was the Alpha. That's the Yalta National Championship. Man, that was Benny Green, Tyler Hansbrough. Yeah, that's the Yalta National Championship. The main team, they beat us by 70. 
<laughs> that's your freshman year. They yeah, beat y'all by seven. They beat the life that's out of us. That's national championship team. Your freshman the national championship team. That's 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 Rashawn team. McCann, Sean May, Man, Marvin Williams. Like they beat. Yeah. Now nah, I don't think it was seventy, but they beat the life. They beat the life out of us so bad that the best players got in with like fourteen minutes left. The walk-ons got on at like six minutes. That's how bad the beating was. Mm. God damn. Mm. So you got a difference of opinion, and so now you you changing. I go to I go to uh, GW. You're there with <laughs> in DC. You're there with Pinock. Jr. played the year I was redshirting, but yeah, Jr. Pop Pops, was there. Uh, it's a one of Carl somebody Elliott. else. Carl Elliott. Omar I played Williams. With, I played Mike Hall. Venezuela. Mm-hmm. Carl Elliott. Y'all had a y'all had a squad in George Carl, Mason. Oh, Good yes, night. Yes, 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 yes. I go there, bro. I, I'm not. I'm just a national champion. Well, I mean, y'all would. Okay, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Y'all, if, if anybody has forgotten that team, run, if anybody man. has forgotten that team, he's about to remind you, man. Like that nah, team yeah, they, was something serious, so bro. The year I was ever seeing Tate, they made a deep run into the to the playoffs. Oh, I'm gonna tell the story. Chill out. I ain't say nothing, They run a, make a deep run into the tournament. So my red shirt year, they make it to the Sweet 16. So, but my first year playing. JR's gone, Carl's gone, <laughs> Pops is gone, Omar's gone, Mike's gone. Got that oh, that's that's gone. Reese Rice is in his senior year and And he licking his chops. He's licking his chops. <laughs> but Hobbs go Carl Hobbs is the coach at GW. He goes into future mode. And Reese is a senior, and where does he fit at in future mode? He doesn't. Reese ended up quitting halfway through the year. Quit his senior year of basketball. Stayed in school and finished school, but didn't play basketball no more. Wow. In his senior year. Yeah, I think he averaged 18 before he quit. Oh, yeah. That's, that's, that's crazy. Hobbs was, in, Hobbs was in future mode, building difference, for the future. Difference of opinion. Difference in opinion. I mean, you know, he didn't feel like he could be good that year, so he started building for the future. I was a junior, so in your head, me and Diggs, and we looking at the situation like, where do, I, where do I fit in the future? Mm-hmm. Right? Me and Cheyenne is there as well. We all sitting there like, where do we fit in this future? Cheyenne Moore, he went to Clemson, then he went to GW, same time I did. But we like, where do we fit in the future? So he has his big uh, big freshman class come in for my senior year. Um, gives him a bunch of minutes. I get suspended for no reason. I missed 11 games my senior year for no reason. He Well, I don't say he didn't have a reason. He just didn't disclose the reason to me or my parents or the media. Who was your oh, biggest on. recruit? That sign? <laughs> I think David Pelham. He actually went to Memphis. Funny thing he said that. Yeah. Hold on, hold on. You got suspended. Mm. And it was never disclosed to you why you suspended mm. your senior year. Yeah, we at first we thought it was just you know he was upset about something that transpired, so I just thought we benched him for a little while. Then we went out to Cali and didn't play out there neither. Mind you, we won one game during this whole stretch I was suspended, and that was versus Sacramento State. Mm. That was brutal. <clears throat> so Sacramento State was bad, was terrible. Bad. It was good. Yeah, it was terrible. And then we go out to Hawaii to play in a tournament, not the Maui. Um, then we go out there, get dirty ball, 03 while we was out there. Mm-hmm. Then we come back, we start the 810, losing games, close games, but we still losing. So then we play, uh, we got a little break on the 810, we play Loyola Marymount. I don't know if y'all remember, not the, not the one in Cali, the one in uh, Virginia. What's the name of that school? Loyola something. They was on the nation's longest losing streak. We made the, yeah, we made the, State. We made the State. ticker yeah. on this game because mm-hmm. I'm sitting there and we lose. About 12 minutes left in the game, he said, spoon, go get in. <laughs> Bro, I only got my jersey. <laughs> the managers had to run to the locker room to go get my jersey. I wasn't even wearing my jerseys no more because I was spitting, but I didn't know why and I didn't know when it was going to be lifted. I just was sitting there. No conversation. What was going on in practice? Were you <laughs> not practicing? I was practicing with Scott Squad. Oh, yeah, so when you on the Scout Squad, you are killing. No, we was yeah. killing. He had me and a player named Miles Bailey on Scout Scott Squad, and it was to the point where they were practicing against second unit. They were teaching a second unit to plays because South Squad, uh, Scout Squad got ugly. 
Sometimes that's why I do get about that. I ain't gonna lie. That's why I can get ugly. It can get ugly like that. Especially a couple of get suspended, a couple of the walk ons, be a little decent, can play a little bit. You know what I'm saying? So, y'all think it get ugly a little bit. Trust but me. The main thing about South Squad is, you know, them times when you're on offense, you're on offense for. You gun it. <laughs> you gun it. Listen, you listen man, hey, you, you are, you are, you are, uh, so like, Friday, you're, 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 you're the best player. Yeah, was, so, yeah. like, when we played y'all at Memphis, it's just at the time we had. Had, somebody had to be Tyreek coming mm. off the being mm. oh man somebody yeah. I was on Scott Squad I got to be Deontay Christmas I don't know if y'all remember him absolutely I played what? absolutely from Temple yeah, but yeah from man, Temple man, man what absolutely it got bad absolutely. because him now you're talking about yeah you're talking about green light in practice mm-hmm. <laughs> shoot everything yeah yeah. Oh, what? I'm out there. Yeah, that's bad, bro. When you're on the scout team, you really get that. You really get the trust. You're really trying to show them, like, hey, man, take me off the scout team, bro. You got me messed up. I know. I did a two week deal on the scout team because it's always done. That scout team, like, you have a side of lunch because I'm serious, man. You're going to lock You see all your friends. You can't even really talk to the team, bro. They talking to them, like, hey, bro, why are you doing this in this play? Like, I can't talk to this because I want to part of the scout team. But, hey, bro, you saw what he did? Don't talk to me, bro. I'm on scout team. I'm mad. Yeah, nah. So, you want to scout? So, yeah, they put you in with 12 minutes ago against. The team that got the, the worst. Wor- yeah, the nation's worst team. We end up losing. Make the Broke bro, they straight. Broke they losing to, yeah. And then after that, I I played the rest of the season, but I never started. I remember one game I played 39 minutes and didn't start. Like, he was just he was just that guy. Like, my coach was just that guy. I just, he was him. He wasn't going to start me. So, he had decided I wasn't starting, so I wasn't starting. So, let's rewind back. So, you, you, you know you're about to transfer. Yeah. What made you pick GW? I'm pretty sure you wrote a band map and go, you know what I'm saying, different places. Well, I had reached out to Jeff Lebo at Auburn talking about thinking about mm-hmm. transfer. Him and Seth Greenberg had a relationship. So mm-hmm. he calls Seth Greenberg, tells him what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. And so at that point, I was like, I, I want to play for a black coach. Got to be tough. Yeah, I want to play for a black coach. I want to play for somebody who's outside of this green so I don't end up on the sh- short end of things, which, I mean, in hindsight, that didn't, didn't work out. Don't really matter. Right. But I wanted to play for a black coach, so that was important. I mean, I would have I would have went to Memphis. Mm-hmm. I ain't going to lie to you. Mm-hmm. But Dozier had got – Dozier and Tiger and Kyler Perry wasn't on the same page at the time. And they was more like more my introductory to Memphis. Uh, Wesley was still in – Sophomore, junior, yeah. high school. Yeah, so. yeah you, 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 you might have been even a freshman. No, it was junior. Sophomore, junior, that's what I said. I thought you said freshman, sorry. No, okay. sophomore, junior. So, he he hadn't really started his real recruitment. Oh, yeah. So, you know, my, my whole life, my whole six. life, like, we're, we're four years apart. Mm-hmm. So, he's four years from Will. I'm four years from him. So, Literally, we miss each other by a year. A year, you know, and four years. And high your school. whole life, so you never up, got to play with you. Growing it's up, it's like, it was like it's I'm like a mythical you. thing. Like it's like a, you know, I wanna if I could just get one year with my brother. Play like with I my just brother. want one year. So yeah. while all this is happening with him, now my recruitment is starting to pick up. So you got a blueprint now. Literally, uh, so I'm, I'm, I'm seeing how it's happening. Like I'm seeing what's going on. So off the wham for me. The schools that did him bad recruiting wise, when they called me, first day I'm not I'm not coming. It, you you don't even gotta call me back. No, don't worry about know it. What it is. The Virginia Techs, the Georgias, the Georgia Techs, all them schools that did him bad, don't even don't worry about it, because now you know it's it's he was really really good. And now I'm really 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 good. No, and the now, thing oh, is, no, he was he stuff. was way better. <laughs> he was way better offensively. Then no, I was, I'm not saying that. Hey, I'm saying hey, that. He's saying, you really, really, really yeah, hey, bro. Look, he shorted but, your rallies, bro. Time out. Time out. Time out. Time out. Time out. In that aspect, first of all, first of all, he's got a couple inches on you. No, no, so no. He's, that he's more quick than me. Huh? Hey. hey. <laughs> Yo. Pause. Wow. You took your phone for his head, your rally, bro. Come on. Come on. For real, bro. For real. Seriously, seriously, seriously. You got he's he's taller than you by a couple. Nah, of he was inches. more recruited than me. I ain't gonna lie. So, he was a Jordan All American. All of So oh, if we gonna if we gonna be was, real, we being real. That's what I'm saying. But he at this point he is he, 
he had the hype at that point in time. But yeah, and that was Just my thing. Just to keep it a bean. Like, that was, that was my thing. Like, Winton, Winton almost kind of had to, he had to approach his, his recruiting differently because he was way better than a lot of them guys mm-hmm. that was highly touted. And, you know, by the time people figured it out, it was almost like it was too late. So he almost had to settle when it came to the schools that he could pick and choose from. But he and also battling against the thing of no exposure. That's like, what I'm saying. Like, he, didn't, he, didn't, he didn't get a chance to really, like every time he got on a, on a stage to where he could play against guys that were really, mm-hmm. you know, that was that was highly recruited. And, you know, one, one game I remember because I was in the car with him, his team was playing at the Peace Jam in Augusta. And they're playing against the Gauchos. And the Gauchos is soon be out of games and the what about the Pittsburgh? He was so bad. Russell Kidd. Le, 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 LeVance Fields? No, not Fields. No, he's, not he's, Fields. He's, he's just a uh, – he was light-skinned. I forget the color. Yeah, I can't think his name either. But, you know, that, that Gauchos team was really good. And Winton got there because he had to take the SAT. He got there like two minutes, three minutes before halftime. And he finished the game at 28. And people is like, wait, like – who the hell is this kid? Like, why ain't nobody talking about this kid? But you know, by that time, it's almost over. But you know, these college coaches, a lot of time is, you know, is they see something and they they look good. But I don't want to be the first one to, to try it out. Sign, you feel me? So mm-hmm. if I, if you a coach and I see you see you looking at it, shit, I'm gonna start looking at it too. Mm-hmm. And you know, by that time when that started happening, it was almost it was too late. But for me, I got to see it from a different light because. When my recruiting picked up, it blasted. Mm-hmm. And now I got everybody in the nation, you know. I played against Double R and got them Dominican Republic. He right. played at, uh, no, I played against him in Brazil. Sorry, I played against him in Brazil. He was playing for, against, I know that, yeah, Shooter. Yeah, but it was cold. But yeah. he was probably, because yeah. they were supposed to have sea bass on that team, but he never went to nothing. So he spent most of his senior year ranked number two, I think, behind the white. But he didn't go to nothing. He ain't show up to Peace Jam. He ain't go out to Vegas. Like, he really didn't show up to much of nothing. Like, he played when he wanted to, I guess. I ain't seen him in no tournaments the entire year. Um, the white men played Adidas circuit. So, back then, it wasn't no EYBL. It was Adidas and Nike circuit. Mm-hmm. So, this is uh, before Under Armour, too. Under Armour was the leader. Like, he was so, he exist, didn't he? Maybe yeah, because you know we had when we was growing up, we had tournaments where it was it didn't matter if it was Nike, Adidas, it didn't matter. Like Bob Gibbons, one of those tournaments. Bob Gibbons, anybody come to Bob Gibbons, and you know they took Bob Gibbons away the tournament when it was in Carolina because you play games at Duke, you play games at Carolina, you play games at NC State, you play games at Wake Forest, and when when the college scene got introduced into AAU basketball, they made it seem like those schools had an unfair yeah, advantage. Think, yep. So they moved yeah. it. They took that. They took that tournament out, and then we had another one, a really good tournament growing up was the Super Showcase down in Orlando up in Wildwood, of course. Mm-hmm. And you know this was all before the EYBL circuit and the AAU or uh, the, the uh, Under Armour the circuit, gauntlet. the Gauntlet. Like this was before all that. So if your team was nice at Bob Gibbons, we don't worry about it because we gonna see you. Don't worry about it. Y'all don't got no. Ain't no. Duck, it wasn't no duck and no wreck back then. You gonna have to play against the best of the best, and that's just what it is. Like now, if you're a Nike kid. Like, you'll well, never see the kid on the Adidas oh, no, circuit Adidas because circuit. he playing a whole different circuit to you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the, the, the whole EYBL thing for me is, is ridiculous because they don't even play to win tournaments. Like, everything is like a round robin to it's get the point, Peace Jam. Just points, yeah. Yeah, like you trying to – you play the same teams at all these tournaments just to play them again at Peace Jam for bragging rights. And for me, it just don't make no sense. So, after – so, after your, your G-Dub, did you, did you have any – did you try uh, – Professional route? I, I did the professional thing. I traveled a little bit. Um, it was cool. I definitely got some good experience out of it. You know, my, my professional basketball ended in the, the D League, which is cool because. Players and can you play? Thank you, Chris. No, I didn't play for the I was playing for the Santa Cruz Warriors. Okay. <laughs> it, started, it started in Des Moines. It's funny thing about my professional career. I actually started in Des Moines. Mm-hmm. And then I traveled, and then I ended there. Santa Cruz. Actually, I didn't really even play for Santa Cruz. It was just that's where it ended. And that was it for you, just once I went out there and I and I got a taste of that politics, politics, and just everything. 
I was just like, I'm cool. When I came home, I introduced Lil Winter to the world, and it was a wrap for basketball. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So now, so now it's like, all right, now I'm focusing on little bro. I'm trying to make sure I can try to guide and help little bro in as much way, you know, that I can while I'm still trying to figure this thing out myself. Right, yeah. So once I, once he came on the scene, it was like, all right, cool. Now it's time to hit the work scene. And mm-hmm. you're not already seen. So right, you know yeah. what he going to expect now. Mm-hmm. You already know what he about to say. So I hit the work scene, and then, you know, his mother made it so I had to stay on my P's and Q's. So I really wasn't comfortable doing no traveling. Did so. you just say his mother? No, he said his mother. His mother. You talking about your 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 your, your child's mother? Yeah. Not oh, talking about oh, not his mother. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I thought you were talking, talking about his mother too. I'm talking about his mother too. I'm not talking about his mother. 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 I'm not talking about
Hey, hey Lil Spoon. Let me ask you. No, it do. When was the first it time you was able to beat him one on one? It do, but if there's nothing else that I could. Hello, 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 like yeah, Will got to, Will got to a point where he wouldn't even play us, so we could have a chance to say, "You can't beat me." And right. when, Will, when, when Will saw what was happening with him, really, because it, it was it was really him, because when he was in the seventh grade, he was skilled enough to play with the older guys. Like I, that wasn't me. Like with my peer group, I was taller, I was faster, I wasn't really better than a lot of guys until. Like, I started to take basketball serious. Like, I didn't want to work out. When did you start taking basketball serious? Like, sophomore year of high school. Sophomore year of high school? Junior year, junior year of high school, something like that. So, when did the when did the wheels start to turn? Like, when did the rankings start to get? Junior year of high school. Junior year. Was that that, that 17, of, 17 under AAU year. Was that because, because of, okay. Because I, I had, I yeah, because I had, my AAU team was loaded. Like, we had four draft picks. We had... 12 out of 13 guys go play D1 basketball. And, you know, at that point in time, we had the number three overall player in the nation. We had the number Who was one, that? Alfred Alfred. We had the number 20 player in the nation, Tony Woods. We had the number 29 player in the nation, Ralph Sampson. And you had me that was right there in that area, oh, too. You got the whole North over there. Yeah. We called the whole North. But this, was, yeah, this, was, this was before, this was before I was a part of that conversation. It just so happened that I was just starting guard on that and team. And you playing with niggas that's already that's right. Good. So, so now, now, so they now everybody's coming to watch no Alf Rook play. But and he's from yeah. North Cross off two back to back stages. Right, they, they're, they're coming. They're, 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 they're coming to watch Alf Rook play. At this time, I'm like a six four guard, he's you know, proud. and I'm not. I don't really shoot the ball well at this time. I handle it well because I've always been a guard my whole life. But I'm not. When we talked about really this, a, you were talking talk about this, by the way, and we talked about this off the air too. We talked about that off the air a little bit, but the rumor that I heard about you was uh was that you was ambidextrous. Can you talk about that? Can you, cause so, I, I gotta know if it's true or not. Like you were six five six six point guard and you're ambidextrous. So what ended up happening was my father, like anybody else's father growing up, um, they want you to work on that offhand. Like they, you know, because. They see you right-handed naturally. All the drills, you push it to you the know, left. You're gonna be going right. Like you do this so well, going right. So when I started playing, everything for me was right, and I'm guarding up the right side of the floor. And it got to the point where my dad was like, "Well, you know, let's try to work on this left a little bit." So then, you know, my right hand got taken out of the equation, and I became a left-hand ball-dominant basketball player. Mm. But I'm right-handed, so people think when they watch me play, like, "Oh, he's got to be left-handed because I just." naturally it feels way better going left. It got to the point where I was, at one point in time during me playing basketball, I was solely going left. Like, I ain't even want to put it right in the article. Oh, oh my God, this kid is 6'9", a yeah. emidextrous point guard. Yeah. Why, he's one of the top. I'm like, bro, you got a dang right. If he's 6'9", and your point guard, he ever, that bitch, he could shoot, pass, through yeah. everything with either hand. Like, that kid, me? That, that's crazy, because nowadays, you weren't hearing nobody six nine being a point guard, man. Nah, yeah, that was a, a few and far between. Yeah, the, 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 the narrative changed for me because, like mm-hmm. I said, when it when like when I start me at me Al Farouk, Tony, my AAU team, we played together for four years in a row, and you know when we started, like we were good, but we weren't really, you know, we weren't really like that. Mm-hmm. And then Al Farouk sprouted. From you know six five six six to six nine he six did. ten, and it happened fast. And then we picked up Tony because Tony wasn't always Just with as us. Fast as his rankings went up, he, right? He, he so fast. so now now all of this is happening, and in the process of it, we're playing games. And one tournament, I'm six four, and then the next tournament, I'm six four and a half. And then we have a a week off, two weeks off. The next tournament, I show up to him six eight, and it's like wait. Is this the same kid that was just, mm-hmm. you know, so, just like that. yeah, so the crazy part about it is, is, so my brother, <laughs> my, we have a sister as well, and our sister was, you know, we were always, 
eye level. Mm -hmm. And over that summer, it went from us being eye level to me looking down. Did she down play basketball too? Yeah, she did. That happened that same summer? That's the summer I met y'all. Yeah, because the crazy part about it is they used to laugh at me, bro. When I take my shirt off, I had stretch marks on my back. Going all up and down my back. Like from the top of my back to the bottom of my back. It was growing so fast. It was stretch marks. And they, you know, both when you look at a woman, they got stretch marks, they're going up and down. Mine were going left to right. And it was all up and down my back. So when I took my back off, it looked like somebody had like whooped you or something. Like, yeah, like I had like I had whelps on my back because it I literally grew five, six inches in a month and a half. Jesus Christ. Goodness. So you're so growing. So as month. you're growing, man, obviously you're you your, your rankings is growing. You're going up in the rankings. You're climbing. And so now you get to your senior year, junior, senior year, and you're where you want to be. And you have reached a level of where you think is your big brothers, mm. you know, where, 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 where Winton is at. Mm. So now what is your thought process? And let's say the recruiting, because now you're getting advice to the Jordan Brand All-American mm. game and all that type of stuff. So now where is your head at? Like, are you... Are you on a high? Are you cocky? Are you still humble about it? Like, so it's like my my brother told y'all before. Like, everything for us was a competition. Mm -hmm. Like, from if it's if it's who can get the most groceries out the car, going into the crib, it's always a competition. So I just like he said about Will, I wanted to one up them. I had to one up them. Like I had to find something that could get me one up above them. And, you know, the one thing that I regret that I never got to do was win a state championship because I still hear about that shit today. They both got a state championship ring and I didn't. Mm -hmm. So, you know, when when they, when they we have these high school basketball debates, I kind of got to take a back seat because mm -hmm. I never got to experience that state championship level basketball. So, you know, for me, when I, I'm going through, you know, the whole process, what I'm going through, I found my way to get my one up. Because now, shit, I'm a Jordan All-American. Fuck, it ain't number 20 of these guys in the nation. So I got my one up on him now. So, like, I'm almost to the point where, like, I'm satisfied. Mm. But he transfers. So, like I said before, he's four years older than me. So he transfers from Virginia Tech to George Washington. The whole time I'm going through my recruiting process, I'm eliminating every school that even said something bad about him. Like, I don't even, we not even talking. It's not even a thing. Like, I don't even want y'all to think y'all have a chance at recruiting me because I'm not coming. So, he's at George Washington. And when he decides to transfer, he has the red shirt year. Mm -hmm. Which means. You have to play together finally. I get a year. So, yeah. automatically for me, I don't give a fuck. I'm going to George Washington. I don't care. I don't, I, I don't want to hear what nobody else has to say because my whole life, I've had one, one goal. And that's, I want to play basketball with my brother. Like, I want to play organized basketball with my brother. Mm -hmm. And I finally got the opportunity. And Winton was like, not knowing boy, that please, even if you come, do you don't mean do you're going to play with me. He said, I'm a freshman. He, he I told, told I told me, if, if you come here, I will fight you every day. I told him I'm fighting every single day. Not We're going to fight every day if you come to school here. And that, do not that, waste that, it. What better... Better advice can you get than that right there, dog? That's 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 so you know for me for me it was like to to be so close to that. Mm -hmm. I, I don't I didn't really care about the outcome. Like for me, I just I wanted that like I know you watched the six man growing up, like being able to play ball with your brother, like yeah, with your right. with your with your not your partner you grew not up with, brother. not your homeboy or your cousin. This is my blood brother, like my brother, like my older brother, oh, you one of my role too. models, yeah. right? One of my original role models. Like, I finally got a shot. And not only is this organized basketball, this is at a big stage. Like, we're going to have ESPN games. I'm just, I'm thinking, like, the marketing is going to be crazy. The Spoon Brothers going here. And, you know, and when he told me what he told me, it was like, all right, well, you know, that's over with. So now I got I to gotta figure out what's next. Because when, when the opportunity presented itself at the beginning of my recruiting process, I'm like, ain't even nothing to talk about. Like, I don't I don't care what other schools is recruiting me. I don't care because I'm going to play ball with my brother. Like, that's it. And, you know, that, that got washed away. And, you know, then, then my focus shifted from playing with my brother to figuring out what was best for me. And, you know, the recruiting process is a, is a, is a dirty game. Like, you know, it's, it's – is dog eat dog, and every coach, especially when you go through that home visit part of your recruiting, 
They'll come sit in your crib and they'll tell you everything you want to hear. I mean, it's, I mean, it's shit what you see. expect. Like I said, this Georgia mm-hmm. brand, all American. You know, AJC, uh, all state first team selection. You average what? 18, and, and we're going to say 10, 18 and 10, point, 10 rebounds a game and four and a half assists. So, you know, I'm pretty sure you got every major mm-hmm. college mm-hmm. coach. Lying to you, <laughs> yeah. So you know, I, you I, 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 never, I, will, I will, to this day, I will never put a name on this coach. I won't even say the school, but I had a head coach from the school come sit in my living room. I'm a 17 year old kid at this time. He came and sat in my living room, and he made him and every one of his assistant coaches get on their knees in my living room. What? And literally begged me, Wesley, please come to this school because we need you. I said, Coach, please do that. Man. There's no way I'm coming to your school because I can't respect you as a man. Mm. Absolutely. Absolutely. Wait, him and all of his assistants got him on his knees. And three assistant coaches. Yeah. Ooh, boy, the was it amazing? I quit. I quit. What was it? I quit. No, there, there, it was the school was. It's a good school, it's and so they produce pros. Coach. Yeah, absolutely. D1. And he's a respected coach. Like, if I said his name, y'all would be like, no fucking you way. You tell me off, off, yeah, off, yeah. off camera. Yeah. No, like, no way he did that. And for me, when I saw it happen, I was like, like come on, like, get up. You feel me? Like, I can't come to your school now. Even if it was a possibility in the back of my mind, I can't come to your school now because I don't respect you as a man. So, you know, going through the whole recruiting process for me, I was able to eliminate schools off the whim because of how they did my brother. And then when I went through the home visit process, I was able to eliminate schools that didn't send their head coach. So now, in my mind, I'm thinking, you, I'm send, the, you ain't sending your top. Five. I'm the you prize, right? Yeah, I'm absolutely. the prize. Y'all don't me. don't don't send the, the the associate manager. I need to talk to the CEO. Like I want to talk to the head hunter. I want to talk to the guy. So you know, schools like Michigan say, I talk to Izzo on the phone. That's a all gem the time. you just dropped, by the way. Absolutely. Boom. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. You Absolutely. just dropped the gym. The head but you know, not coming to see you. I, I, that yeah, head you can't want me that bad. So that was my thing. So, you know, I had a, a, like Izzo. I, I like Michigan State and I like Izzo. Like we had deep conversations, you know, on the phone and blah, blah, blah. But the home visit, he didn't come. I wrote him off. I don't want to, I don't, I, we can't rap. Kansas was the same way. I talked to Bill Self on the phone. Home visit, Bill Self done show. I'm out of it. So out of all the coaches that came and did their home visit, Texas showed up and showed out. This is Rick Barnes. Rick Barnes is at Texas, and he comes to the crib, and I'm sold on Texas. I'm like, shit, I'm going to Texas. Like, I'm I'm locked in on Texas. This is right after Katie was there. Um, Damian James Damian was James. there. We played him that year. DJ Augustine. DJ Augustine left. AJ Abrams. Yep, Dexter all Pippen. All those guys Dexter were at Pippen. Texas. So I'm like, shit, I'm going to Texas. Like, it's lit. My last home visit. Ends up being Memphis. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So Memphis and 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 Cal them showed up Did to Cal my house. Cal have Doja call you? No. Okay. Cal showed up to my house, four black cars deep. They pulled up like the mafia. And I lived in the cul-de-sac, so I'm anticipating them coming because they told me a time. So I see these four black cars mm-hmm. pull into the cul-de-sac, and I'm peeking out the blinds like, who in the like? Just pull up like this. Who the hell is this? And every coach gets out their own car. Chuck Martin, BK, Cal, Robes, they all get out their own car. And they pull into the crib. I sit down. I introduce them to everybody in the crib. They knew mostly everybody. I had my best friend, TJ Smith, Keith, my Uncle Smitty. They're all in there. Like They wanted to experience that too. So, That's dope. So, you know, they're in the meeting with me. And I introduced them. And uh, the first thing Cal says, he shows his little video. Cuts the video off, closes his laptop. Well, kid, I want you to come to Memphis, but I don't need you. Oh. And I was like, oh, shit. Like, got your attention now. Yeah, I'm like, wait a minute. Like, <laughs> folks on their knees a few visits ago. Right. And he tells me, like, look, I you want you to. You pull up back, cause. You feel uh, me? You give me presidential the suits, speak with look, the suits suits walk I'm in. thinking you finna come in here and do something to yeah, say. I'm thinking he really about to try to sell me on coming to Memphis. The mm-hmm. first thing out of his mouth. Because you the same class with Reed. Yes. 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 Number three right. recruiting class in the nation, by the way. Yeah. But, uh, so they sit down. They sit down after the Another video. One up. Another one up. After, after the video, you know. Literally, this is the first thing that comes out of his mouth. He's sitting there cool and collected. You know, BK and him sitting down, soup song. Yeah, Wesley, I, um, I want you to come to Memphis, kid. 
but I don't need you. And everybody that was a part of my side of that meeting did the same thing. What's your name? Oh, shit. Yeah. Like, what's going on here? You know, this motherfucker, like, how you trying to buy this car? You gonna, you know, you know, I want the car. I don't need, need this car, though. I like it. Yeah, this is well, a nice it's car. Nice. This is a nice car, but very, I don't very need it. Car, very you feel busy, the production so, car. So, me being in the process of, I've just had 25 home visits. You know, I eliminated half because the head coach didn't come. You know, some of these schools came with their head coach and they was just on some bullshit. We gonna retire your jersey. We gonna die. I don't want to hear. Sick of hearing that. So at the end of that, at the end of the home visit process, I just knew Calden was coming with that same type of vibe, like the car salesmanship. Cal's never been a car salesman, so he tells me that, and I'm like, damn, he just shook some shit up for me. And you're competitive too, so you're trying yeah, to so like, I'm like, you don't need me. In, in my yeah. mind, I'm thinking Who like, me? I'm thinking like, you got me <laughs> fucked up. <laughs> like, yeah, like you got me fucked up at this point in time. So, you know, we sit down and it comes down to three schools. When, you know, the the when it really gets down to the nitty gritty, my options are three options. I got Texas. I got Who's Memphis. Number one on the board right now. Texas is my number one. It's everybody's number one. Mm -hmm. Memphis. And I got Virginia. Shout out to Dave Leto. Dave Leto was my guy at Virginia. The only reason I didn't go to Virginia is because they were just really, really bad. Like, I wanted to go to Virginia. Silver Landersburg was, would have been a part of my recruiting class. We'd have been nice. But I just didn't want to – I didn't want a chance. So another another way Memphis kind of kind of backdoored Texas in that aspect is I go to one game that whole year. At Memphis, I go to one game recruiting. And mind you, they came to so many of my games. You know, they was coming to my high school. And I go to one game, and it's the one-two game. Memphis versus Tennessee. Mm -hmm. At the FedEx Forum in Memphis, Tennessee. Mm -hmm. This is that number game. number one versus number two in the nation. Like, not, not like on some in-state, right? This is like no, literally number one in the nation versus number two in the nation. This is D-Rose, right? Yes. This is D-Rose. Chris Lofton. Yeah, this is the only game. This yeah. is the only game I go to all year. Mind and you, I'm on the team, and I'm red-shirted. And uh, so I don't get to play, but I get, I get my tickets. And uh, I, I eventually I get the tickets for the best seat in the house, so I get to sit on the bench. Man. And I get to sell... I mean, I don't care. I can sell my tickets, bro. Cam, oh, Cam will tell you. <laughs> Cam, you might be able to cut that. I sell my hey, tickets for six hundred dollars a piece. Cam will tell tickets. you, bro. Cam will tell you that environment, and in that that FedEx Forum environment is different because the city of Memphis that we they was the behind. Pro team, the that pro team, team, yeah, that team. Because I mean, the Grizzlies didn't really have. No, 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 no. It was the kids. Yeah, it was the like, kids was, they had. Like the, they had the city, some real life. The city of the, the, city, the city. That, that, their story. Period. Gotti was, was coming to the games and stuff like that. Bro. It was like real life hood. Like there was more people coming to the you Memphis did, college you games did, than, than the Grizzlies. Yeah, than the Grizzlies. You hear me tell you, sure. folks said it. I don't play around, and I tell you that all the time. Miami, Buffalo, New Orleans, and Memphis. But Memphis yeah. is love if they rock. Yeah, if they know you, yeah. if they yeah. rock, they, they, Memphis so, is love. So that one game I go to, the atmosphere is crazy. Like I'm like, there's no way this is a college. First of all, this is not a college game. Because it it's, feel it's like it 18 at all. five in the building and it it's shoulder like to it. shoulder. It Standing like room it. only. It's crazy. And it's a great game. So Memphis loses. Great it's the game, only game bro. they lose all year into the championship. The championship. It was a great and so I'm game. like I'm like, man, I done came to this damn game and they lost, bro. It's my fault, bro. Fuck it. I got to go to Memphis. I got to go to you Memphis. You took it personal as a competitor. Like, yeah, like. They had me. We beat Tennessee. No, I'm no, thinking like, if like I don't come to that to game, yeah. if I don't come to that game, I think they win. Gotcha. So, so now they're, like, under, they're undefeated going into the tournament. Gotcha. You know, they're, they're, they're the number one overall seed, you know, saying, yeah. you know, CDR, D. Rose, Joy Dorsey, Taggart, uh, Robert, they're, they're playing great basketball right now, beating the shit out of everybody. So during that tournament run, they smoke Kevin Love or Russell Westbrook. Yeah, they smoke know. Michigan State. Like not not like beat them. They, nah, they smoke them. them. They smoke. They they beat the shit out of everybody. Mm -hmm. I'm watching it, and I'm D. like, D Rose in his back. I'm <laughs> like, I got to be a fans. part of that, cuz. So I shit. I'm like, fuck it. I'm going to Memphis. And so shit. I choose Memphis, and you know they go to the championship game, 
And I'm like, shit, it's six hours away. I know my people could get in the car. They could get there fast. You feel me? Like, Texas, shit, that's a 12-hour drive. I don't know nobody making that 12-hour drive, cuz. And, Close you know, we'll, proximity. we wasn't poor, but, you know, we ain't have it. Nah, so not them, a big 12-hour drive there and back. No, nah, not even that's, that. That's a day. Yeah, so, you <laughs> know, my father don't mind driving. But, you know, nobody wants to make that drive. And, and flights is expensive. You play, you play stuff too. Yeah, flight, flight's play. expensive. And I see how, how troubling it was trying to get to Blacksburg, Virginia. Trying to get the six hours though. Trying to get to DC. DC was like right. them them yeah. them trips was yeah. it and was them tough. I ain't keep the DC. Either. You feel me? No so it was a another well. learning curve. Another learning curve right. for you to be like, but, right, go on now, boy. Go on now. Go on now. I gotta be I gotta be in close enough proximity yeah. so they can make a drive. So you was another so learning curve. So I'm like brother. I'm like you know what? Memphis is my choice. Now mind you, nobody else wanted me to go to Memphis. And when I picked up the Memphis hat. So are we just, is this the point in time based on the decision that you disappointed? No, in? no, okay, he's okay. fine with this one. Okay, okay. He's actually, like he's actually one of the only ones that was okay with my decision. Yeah, I like California. So I'm I, like choose, California. I, like I choose Memphis. You do a hat draw. I got three hats up there. Four oh, hats, so actually, because I had a Colorado hat up there, too. So it's four hats up there. Huh? It, was, it, was, it was Memphis, Texas, Virginia, Colorado. Those are my four hats. No.